coming up on Arts District. Art drops to raise awareness in the city of Denver. A sculptor heals through connection and Dance Express celebrates 30 years. Plus the sweetness of Palisade peaches and more. That's all ahead on Arts District. I'm Kate Perdoni. And I'm Michael Gadlin. Welcome to my studio. And welcome to Arts District from Rocky Mountain PBS. We're starting off today's episode with a treasure hunt. All right, sounds exciting. Who doesn't love a treasure hunt? Mm -hmm. So as part of Art Drop Day, Denver artists hide a piece of art somewhere, give clues on social media so people can find them. The event is hosted by Denver Arts and Venues and features everything from sculpture to jewelry and paintings and so much more. Alexis Kukowin takes a closer look at how one organization dropped art to raise awareness for their mission. Imagine this, you're walking down the street on your way to work or the store, or maybe just out for a stroll. Well, I live in Arvada and I come downtown to get my hair uh, done. You see a piece of art. It seems a little out of place. Thinking, what is it just doing? I'm gonna get dirty and rained on. But then you see that there's a note attached. This lets them know that it's theirs to keep. I really feel like I hit the lotto. It's all part of World Art Drop Day, the first Tuesday in September. I kind of described it to people as like a scavenger hunt, but basically art is hidden throughout the city. Some organizations will post clues and you can go get a free piece of art. And as soon as they find it, we encourage them to take a selfie and post that they found it and where they found it, so. We are on Facebook and we are uploading our clue and our photo so that someone knows where to go find the art. And then we're gonna tag Denver Arts and Venues Art Drop. Project Heartwork is just one of many organizations that participate. Project Heartwork is an international network of artists and supporters. We're working together to try and raise awareness for human trafficking. And we did a little more digging into the topic of human trafficking and found out how prevalent it is here in Denver. So we thought we would use art to try and start conversations about human trafficking with different communities who may be underinformed. They drop the art to help raise awareness for their mission hoping the finders will visit their website included on the note. I think my art particularly goes with this theme because I paint very expressionist, which has a lot of freedom with it. Human trafficking is a form of slavery and being able to paint is the ultimate freedom. Thinking about the fact that human trafficking is still a very real and very serious problem even here in Colorado. I think it's pretty urgent to get people thinking about it and do something about it. Come and get it. <laughs> Art Drop Day was started in Utah with the goal of connecting strangers through creativity and giving. It's a part of the community. It gets people excited about art. And art is, should be shared. And so this is the, the ultimate. It's just kind of exciting that someone might just be walking down their normal route and see something cool sticking out and just make their day that much better. It's a good platform for our artists to get out and share their art with the world as well. So we figure it's win-win for everybody. Especially for those lucky enough to pick up what was dropped. At first I was like, this can't be real. And then I thought to myself, wow, what a lucky day. I feel like my whole day is just gonna go brilliantly. So very excited. For Arts District, I'm Alexis Kikowin. Whoa, okay, so during Art Job Day, 500 pieces of art were hidden and found in Denver. Would you ever hide one of your paintings? I mean, it would have to be like one of your much smaller works. You know, I might. it would be a really interesting challenge to do. I kind of wonder where I'd even put it, mm -hmm. what kind of clues I would give. Yeah. But I should give it a whirl. You Maybe you could help me out. Sure. You can find out more about Art Drop Day on Denver Arts and Venues website. 
Up next, it was the childhood experience of building alongside his father that began an artistic passion. And to this day, Colorado sculptor Wayne Brungard continues to make art. His bronze and wood sculptures create a sense of connectedness for Wayne and those who experience his art. Wayne shows us that it's people, not possessions, that give meaning to life and how his process paved the way for his own healing path. Arts District producer Jeffrey Dallet has this story. It's a HEPA filter that draws the ambient air in, purifies it, and then runs it through the hose again. They're always concerned about me inhaling fumes. So I'm getting ready to add some bronze to, to this bronze. Then I'll go ahead and heat it. Then I'll texture it with a hammer. My name is Wayne Brungard, and I'm a sculptor. The first thing that I ever created was probably a table and chair when I was eight years old. But I've always been designing and building things at home, at high school, in college. That gives some idea of, of starting to build it up and to get the texture that I'm looking for. My training is in woods and metals following my dad around in construction. I started with on furniture, and I started exhibiting some of my pieces in national shows. And from that, there was a credibility build up. The definition of art, for me, it has to be engaging with the observer. To be an artist, for me, <clears throat> means just this incredible joy and happiness of being able to express through the things that are designed and built, things that do not normally come to the conscious. What I have found for me is not what is the meaning of life, but what gives meaning to life. And it's all about connection. It's all about relationships. I'm going to ask for your help if you'll just pull the blanket out. I had some friends help me, and when we were all said and done, they said the next time an artist asks us to move, we're going to select a painter. <laughs> Several years ago, they discovered that I had a growth in my throat. And uh, doing an immediate biopsy, they found out that it, was, that it was malignant. I was given three to six months to live. I wound up with a trach. I was unable to talk at all. But if I wanted to communicate, I would have to write everything down. Through that three years, I had a lot of time to think and a lot of time to write. And a lot of time to be cared for. If it wouldn't be for my wife, I wouldn't be here. That solidified for me the importance of connectedness. There were times during the illness that I wasn't sure if I'd wake up in the morning, but I didn't want to leave Zoe. There was more that, I, that I'm here on earth to do. That was one of the first pieces that I did. I wouldn't have a cast for Zoe. I was feeling better, and I would go down to the studio, and I would spend a little bit more time. Zoe would say, dear, don't you need to go down to the studio? Don't you need to go down to the studio? Months afterwards, she told me that the more I went down to the studio, the more my voice came back. So now I don't have to write things down on paper anymore. Well, what a gorgeous day. His work is beautiful, and I immediately said, Wayne, we have to do an exhibition together somehow. So this is an old Episcopalian chapel. When the Auraria campus was built for the University of Colorado Denver, that's when it was converted to an art gallery. For me, this piece so strongly relates to the, the landscape, the timbers crisscrossing, and it becomes sort of like a mountainscape. Wayne is so interested in 
and relationships and the way that people interact with each other. And this definitely is a dance to me between shapes and forms. The highlight of my career so far has been the show at the Emanuel Gallery. The large freestanding pieces are probably more about connections with other people. So the welds are really important as far as the connectedness. There's a time and a season for everything. People have asked, why didn't you do this 20 years before? I wasn't old enough. There was a whole lot more that I needed to know about growing up. What gives meaning to life is connectedness with other people. How inspiring that art became his most powerful language when other forms of communication were taken away. Yeah, absolutely. That Emanuel exhibit is over, but you can get a look at Wayne's work at waynebrungard.com. Up next, the joy of dance. To feel the music, to move your whole body, to express yourself. Performers and volunteers at the Fort Collins Modern Dance Company, Dance Express, are celebrating 30 years of encouraging everyone to dance. Janine Trudell of Tailwind Media takes us into their studio and onto the dance floor. Dance is really about self-expression. We're able to interpret through our body and bring it out into the world. I felt free. Dancing makes me feel good. The mission of Dance Express is to improve people's lives through creative dance experiences. We're opening the doors for people to have the opportunity to express themselves. Dancing with Dance Express is a highlight of my life. Dance Express is a modern dance company for people with and without disabilities in Northern Colorado. We were founded in 1989 as a part of workshops to give arts access to people with disabilities in the Fort Collins region. You come up beside her. As an occupational therapist, I feel like I'm really bringing something of significance to others. And you don't get to do that all the time. Look at our nice straight lines, Michael's. I love dance. Straighten these lines out. I do like being one the one who says Michael. what to do. Um, one step <laughs> backward, Rafa. There is a little bit of that. All right, let's. Mary Elizabeth is the best, best teacher. Okay, I want you in the middle of the stage. Back up. Michael just loves to dance. Yeah. I'm gonna have I've been dancing at Dance Express in 2006. My dance style is really good and a very good talent. So Michael, he's exuberant. You know, sometimes he's, he, he's like, oh, I don't want to do anything, but when he gets that music and he gets out there, he, he brings the music alive. Sometimes my legs will move, and all my, all my body's really good doing dancing moves. I'm a very good dancer. Annika? Sometimes we say people have a disability and we maybe pigeonhole them as a result of that disability. It's kind of the truth that all of us have a disability. <laughs> I believe everyone can dance. Camera. One of the dancers started with us and she was only 15 years old. Stand up by the I am my baby in powder dance for us in 30 years now. She is a good leader and when we have gone to different schools, she can help be a teacher. She can create choreography. She can really express herself. I've been dancing with the Hands Express ever since 1997. Four years? I don't know how long exactly. I'll say 16 years. A lot of my dancers, they already have the dance in them. My body tells me saying, Keep dancing, keep going. I hear the beat and my feet um, re reacts. And what they're learning in Dance Express is how to work with one another, how to actually communicate non-verbally. It's rhythm of the beat and move our whole body. 
I started dancing when I was in fifth grade. I took a ballet class and jazz and ballroom. When I danced, I felt free to do Dance Express. It makes me happy and peaceful. When I dance on stage, I'm grateful of dancing in front of an audience. It felt great to have audience watching me. And my friends, family. Dance Express has given people of different abilities the chance to express themselves as they would like. And we perform in theaters. Give them a chance to go somewhere else and be someone else. It is a privilege for me to be the one to watch the new movements happening, to see what can really emerge. I feel so full of joy after watching that story. It is a beautiful celebration of dance and art and also the elation that comes along with sharing it. Even better news, Dance Express plans to expand its services in Northern Colorado. They have performances scheduled throughout the year. Up next, warm days and cool nights make for a delicious peach harvest on Colorado's western slope. In an area well known for luscious fruit, the small town of Palisade has been called the peach capital. Feast your eyes on some gorgeous landscapes brought to us by the Colorado Springs Gazette and video journalist Hannah Tran. We're the longest uh, family in the valley continuing the farm. First one came in in 1897. And the Grand Valley is Palisade, Clifton, Junction, Afruta. We've been here for three centuries, 121 years ago, I guess it was. They started to get recognized early in the 1900s. Uh, they were sending their fruit off to uh, fairs across the country and the uh, flavor and taste was just being acquired by the, the country and got to be well known that out of Palisade was coming a quality uh, fresh peach. A peach is a desert fruit, our high altitude desert, the cool nights as you always hear in the hot days uh, let the sugars build up and get into the fruit, and make them sweeter, uh, are fresh. This Colorado River water that they're raised with is just uh, hard to find anywhere else in the country. I'm fifth generation, my daughter's sixth, and if Cash so sees, sees the opportunity, he would be the seventh. to do it all because we're all you know you're together working together all the time it's kind of hectic during harvest there's you know a ton of stuff going on between picking and packing and then loading trucks as they showed up and then the fruit stand and it gets busy down here so it's pretty a lot going on at once i just know in the trees and it's something that it takes a while to learn Kenzie's been around, but we're bringing her husband in now. He's he's very bright, but it takes a while, and so I'm going to be around here, transition it slowly. What a wonderful family affair, a four-generational business. Yeah, it's so cool that change is slow for these fruit farmers, and that they're taking the time to pass the legacy on to the next generation, because why mess with a good thing? You shouldn't. And you can see more stories from the Colorado Springs Gazette at gazette.com slash video. Earlier in the show, we saw a segment about Art Drop Day in Denver. Where artwork is planted all around the city and folks are given clues about how to track it down. The artist we're bound to see also planted art around his hometown of Seminole, Florida. But without any clues. His medium? Fences. Our PBS partners in Orlando have this story. That was painted 
I think as a kid, I, I liked to paint and draw. My parents were real cool though, growing up. Uh, I remember they, I must have been eight, 10 years old. They let me paint my room all the way around, just draw all in my room, all on the walls, all four walls. So they embraced it, they were real cool about it. Paint the trail, there's a bicycle trail, the Seminole Wakaiba bicycle trail. I hung up my first painting of four years ago. Back then I was struggling as a carpenter, cabinet maker. This after the housing bubble burst. Something I wasn't used to, I had a lot of time on my hands. I'm a busy body person, I like to stay busy, and I was really frustrated trying to find work. I don't know how else to describe it, but it was sort of a, just a juvenile thing. I did a couple paintings on some pickets and screwed them to the trail as the sun was going down because I was trying to irritate everybody. So that's how it started. And I did that for about four months until I realized that people liked it and it wasn't irritating them at all. <laughs> I painted Einstein and Yoda, two different panels that weren't very big. I remember I had my screw pouch. I'd grab a panel, so I'd look both ways, I wouldn't hear anything, and I think I'd run down about 40, 50 feet and screwed, screwed the paintings in and, and uh, got out of there. And I thought it was hysterical. I, I, I pretty much was almost laughing out loud. I never ever in my wildest dreams, like back then, would think that four years later I'd still be doing it. I was just gonna do four or five of them and that was it. I think it was sort of a thrill, not getting caught, and then you'd hear people talking about it, like they were trying to figure out who was doing it, and so that kind of amped me up a little bit, do some more. I didn't ask permission, I just stuck them out there. I think I flew under the radar for like 10 months or something, or almost a year, before anybody really knew what was kind of going on out there. I got busted by some people, and. Uh, I remember the first guy that saw me, uh, that ever saw me was, uh, he stopped on his bike right away and he said, hey, are you the one doing these paintings? And I said, yeah. I was like, you know, and uh, he was like, I love it. The county got a hold of me, Seminole County Cultural Arts, and they awarded me Artist of the Year <laughs> for 2013, which I thought was, you know, just nuts. I, I figured I would get, uh, you know, the, the police would come knocking on my door or something. I didn't expect to get an award. I think it makes the trail more interesting and engaging. There may be people who don't care for it or who feel that it, it obstructs some of the nature, but I think the fence itself does that, and this is adding art to a fence. I'm going to paint five miles, and I just kind of said it as a joke. And I've said it so many times that I think, I, like I said, I, I Jedi mind tricked myself into believing I can do it. If you look at the artwork out there, uh, there's nothing negative. I never uh, painted anything that would agitate anybody. I, I kept everything upbeat, like uh, positive and like inspirational and stuff. Maybe I was trying to uplift myself up or something. I don't know what I was trying to do, but that's still the theme out there. Because I'm just trying to pass on positive vibes. That's all I'm trying to do. When people go out there and they walk and they reach all that stuff, I, I just want them to walk away in a better mood. If they see something that uh, in, could inspire them or make them feel better, then wherever it is they're going that day, they're going to be in a little bit better mood and the people that they're with are going to sense that. I think it's spectacular to society in general because anytime you can highlight the arts, the arts are like the whipped cream on dessert. Dessert isn't even necessary. and. If you can add something to make people be aware of it, I think that just enhances society. Since I've been painting the trail out there, I've really changed my whole way of thinking. Every once in a while, people will ask me if I could do this carpentry stuff for them or cabinet stuff for them, and I have no desire. I love the art. Five miles, that is a lot of fence. That is a lot of fence. And I think it's really funny that this artist won Local Artist of the Year, but that the town almost didn't even know who he was. I know, right? Kind of strange. Finally, we're headed to the Phyllis A. Greer Performance Studio at KUVO. Time to hear some of the grooving sounds of Denver's own MC, J Triple. Yeah, this one is for my people. Hey, Melanin Melodies. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Mike Coast on the B. Yeah, good look, Mike. Yeah, hey. 
Yeah, my race it, trying to slow it down quick. Trying to score, but these suckers be on foul. Shh, shh. Deep down, I know it's pride. They don't want me to drive, but it's no better when I shoot from the line. They would love if I deep brown and cover my eyes. They would love if I dip down and cover my shine. But imagine if my big mama never reached the sky. She would say, forget these suckers, trip, let it fly. All right, I might be paraphrasing, but the fact is she knew a grandbaby was just that amazing. I don't rock with you. That's racist. I embody mind and body. That's greatness. More love and get money. Those are catchphrases. Why you hating on me? That's just black hatred. I want to see blue faces with the black faces. I want you to catch blessings, not catch cases. It's more than life than trying to be famous. With every dollar should be more knowledge you attain. And we getting rich. I admit that we gaining. Where is the heaven? Because we still maintaining. Black people, we the shh. And yo, even though you broke, we already rich. Let's get our face in the book and get up off of Facebook and give them something to talk about when they look. Yeah, hey, hey. It's for all my people that's melanated at home watching right now. Shout out to y'all, love you, yeah. Hey, yeah, do more for your life than going hard for likes. Don't live your life for those who don't like you in real life. Now let's talk about this next topic now, cause I'm bothered. Please stop taking black daddies from their daughters. Let's make that a movement and get it popping. The time is always now, time for everyone to clock in. If we love each other, we should be riding, cause the black lives matter while the bodies keep dropping. Thank you for joining us on Arts District. We love sharing the vibrant arts and culture of Colorado with you. And don't forget to join in some behind the scenes fun on our Instagram page. And check us out on all of our episodes and segments on rnpbs.org slash arts district. I'm Kate Fredoni. And I'm Michael Gablin. Until next time, make it easy. But make it.